All right. Hi, uh, everyone. Today I'm going to do something a little different than my previous videos. Uh, today's video was actually inspired by a challenge posted on one of my favorite Excel how-to uh, channels on YouTube by a Steve Equals True uh, called Excel Dashboards, as one word. Uh, I highly recommend uh, you check out his uh, channel because he covers a lot of great stuff and he really does a great job of explaining how it exactly he's doing it uh, clearly he's been uh, do making these videos for quite a while so um, the challenge that he posted in the last week was to take this table off of the IMDB website uh, and to basically just make a dashboard out of uh, this information here it's uh, the I believe the current rankings uh, top one, 250 uh, films uh, according to their website based off of viewers uh, voting on their website uh, Shawshank Redemption is number one, Godfather, Godfather 2, Pulp Fiction I'd agree with uh, most of these I think uh, but uh, let's uh, go straight to uh, my dashboard and then depending on how much time I have uh, I'll go into how I actually went about creating it all right so I'm, I'm not very still not very good at um, uh, deciding on positioning charts but in actually creating the charts I think these are all uh, pretty awesome and I'll go through one chart at a time um, the first one in the upper left is a pretty basic chart I have uh, the each one of the f 250 films uh, by the number of votes they received uh, and then uh, their uh, given rating so I think it's an average rating uh, over all of those votes and as you can see there is clearly a positive correlation and I could even uh, format uh, the trend line to include uh, added information there's not a lot of space for it but you have a R squared of 3.35 which isn't great but uh, clearly it's positive there's you know a, a lot of cases not following this uh, trend line here and that's why the R squared is so poor as a predictor of indicating obviously there's other things that uh, lead to a, the final score for each film okay uh, below that I have a square what I've deemed as a square pie chart so it functions just like a pie chart would except unlike a pie chart it is uh, well this is technically uh, rectangular it's not square because I had to stretch it out a bit but it's uh, nonetheless fairly useful I have uh, the years in buckets of five so 1920 actually refers to the years 1920 to 19. 24 and it's all color coded and so uh, the advantage of using this sort of uh, squared pie chart instead of just a pie chart is without using labels I you can automatically tell that uh, the 1990s saw uh, two four six percent of the number uh, of uh, films uh, within this ranking range of 1 to 250. Um, and so you can also see that most of the films rated ranking in the top 250 were in this orange column, which is the 2000 to 2004 range, and then none. Uh, there was only one film in the 1920 to 1924. I forget what it, its name was. Uh, but I'll probably figure that out later. Um, and then I have a uh, box and whisker plot that I've created uh, showing the rating distribution by decades. So in, I guess it is a little unclear. This is by five years uh, buckets. This is uh, actually decades. 
And so there's, like I said, there's very few from the 1920s in this uh, uh, top 250, so there's very little for room for a distribution, whereas uh, 2000 and uh, before, uh, there's uh, more variation. Uh, in scores and you also see uh, higher max scores and higher average or I guess I don't have I because it's a small chart I chose not to include the average but you, you can just tell from the median score which is commonly a better uh, indicator than average it, average is just used a lot more um, you have a higher median in here than you have in the other years um, okay, uh, this is probably the coolest chart uh, I've made for this. Uh, you have uh, the count of films by a dynamic ranking uh, tool. So again, this is in five-year increments. Uh, so 1920 actually represents 1920 to 1924, and you have only one film uh, in this ranking range. And then this line represents the average rating uh, for those year buckets. Now, uh, and then the columns are individual uh, film segments, sorry, uh, which is pretty cool. And they're transparent. And right behind them is uh, the Hollywood sign. I've been uh, wanting to incorporate this technique and I'll explain how to do it probably in a, another video and then on top of and then there's a black faded so you can tell the difference between the columns and uh, where they don't represent but if I manipulate these two uh, spin what are they called there insert spin buttons right yeah spin buttons uh, you see, I can manipulate this range. So n right now it's showing all 250 uh, films, but I can lower this. And now what you just saw, the a these thumbs are the s uh, selected average. So the line will stay the same, but these thumbs will change dependent on the range here. So it's a little complicated, and you might have also noticed one of these film segments uh, vanished from this column. So that 250th ranked film was in the 1970 to 1974 range. And I can do this all the way down. Um, and while I'm doing that, you might also notice this uh, button is also affecting here. This is ranks between, and so it's manipulating this, and so that's going to impact the percentage of films uh, represented in this chart as well. So that's pretty cool. And I can just keep reducing it uh, by increments of one. If I get tired of that, I can go ahead and, you know, cheat, format control. And let's see what the top ten looks like. So I change the current value to 10, hit OK, and here's the top 10 uh, films. Uh, you have one, uh, the first earliest is from 1955 to uh, 1959, and then you have a lot more uh, that are in the later years after 1990. Uh, that was something that I noticed um, higher rankings were more shown uh, in the later years. People don't seem to appreciate the older films, according to this. And notice also that uh, these thumbs uh, ha are all jacked way up because we're dealing with higher ranked films. Therefore, they have higher average ratings when you're only counting them. Uh, these uh, film reels represent where uh, these uh, used to be, uh, so you have an idea that even when I'm only looking at the top 10, if I was looking at two, all 250, uh, 2000 is the year that uh, had the most in that range. So it's a little complicated. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Um, you can give me your thoughts. But in any case, uh, down here is when I recently added uh, it has the uh, rating frequency, so uh, all of the 
uh, ratings, uh, the highest I believe was 9.2 and then the lowest was like 7.9 and so I have the number of cases uh, of all the ratings including 9.1 which apparently never occurred and this is also dynamic so I can change uh, this range from 1920 to 1910 which is actually 1920 or 1920 to 2010 which is actually 1920 to 2014 which of course currently hasn't happened yet and neither has five so that's another reason what possible reason why 2010 isn't as high. It's not a complete year. It's a year to date sort of. So I'll go ahead and manipulate this. You see as I subtract years now it's uh, 1995 and it just shows uh, the distribution this way. I could have done the same for here but as I shrink these really uh, the distribution really shrinks down. Okay, the real thing that I really wanted to do for this was to create a bubble chart, uh, which would have worked out a lot better had uh, the uh, ratings not been in this 9.2 to 9. It would have been nice to get that hundreds place, which I think could probably be calculated or at least provided by them. So there's a lot of overlap here. And then there's also the issue if I go and it's dynamic by uh, five year increments has the year that the film came out and then the film's rating and then the size of the bubble is the number of votes that film received and then each bubble is labeled with the name of the film and then its uh, associated ranking and so just as coincidence here we have uh, the number one ranked film uh, the Shawshank Redemption, one of my personal favorites. And uh, yeah, it's dynamic. So I this actually changes by five increments. And so it'll give me uh, 1985 and then to 1990. Um, and it works pretty well until I go all the way to the bottom. Uh, give me a second. to uh, the 1920s to 1924 where there's only one film there it is uh, the kid ranked 124th um, it's only one bubble so Excel doesn't know what range to put on my x-axis usually when there's more bubbles it realizes that these should be like five years max at the bottom there isn't that I know of a way to easily set that sort of thing because each time I want it to change I can't just set it to like 1920 if I one thing I could do is set it to 1920 and then set it all the way to 2010 but then these bubbles would be really mashed together and I don't want that so this bottom needs to be dynamic but somehow I'd like to have some control so it's not totally dynamic so that because right now it wants to set this at zero and then this at uh, 1920s I think 21 is when the film uh, the kid came out um, so that's my chart I'm checking my time um, that is all I can fit uh, next video I'll tr attempt to uh, explain how I went about creating these uh, thank you so much for watching